Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Still here in Santa Clara, California at day two of Ninth Cloud Expo. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Who knows where you could be following this from out there on the World Wide Web. We have our CEO Power Panel to round off this day. We must just apologize. I apologize on behalf of the CEO of New Relic, Lucerne, who's dealing with a family emergency. So if you wonder why these poor foursome have got to be put under the glass and not more, that's why. CEO Power Panel, we better find out who we've got. I say CEO, but of course we mean leading light panel. <laughs> but we'll start anyway. Let Pete introduce himself. Pete Malcolm, please. Hi, I'm Pete Malcolm. I'm the CEO of Abiquo. We're an uh, infrastructure as a service player, private cloud, uh, hybrid cloud pro software provider. Martin. I'm Martin Mikos, CEO of Eucalyptus, the world's most widely deployed uh, private cloud software platform. Lawrence. Thanks. Uh, Lawrence Guillory with Racimi. We're like the moving company for the cloud. We capture server images and migrate them into public and private clouds and make all of the different hypervisor conversions and cloud tool changes so that your server images work when they get there. Daryl. Yeah, Daryl Brown. I'm the uh, GM at uh, Cloud and Digital Media over at Telex. Telex is a, uh, best way to put it, it's a cloud connection center. So we're the place where the clouds live and how you connect to them. That is a good way to put it. So what we're trying to do, this was a, a panel devoted to looking at where the cloud takes us next. There's one company we all know that's constantly predicting where the cloud will take us next. Let's take, for example, Gartner. Do we all know where Gartner says the cloud takes us next? It's nothing good. Gartner says that we are currently on its famous hype cycle, climbing the uh, peak of you know, wild optimism, enthusiasm. You know where that comes next, don't we? We all know. Trough of disillusion. And it says we're headed that way. We took a little survey here at lunchtime power panel when we had thousands of people. I'm, so, I'm sorry to say, but people like these lunch. Nobody in the room agrees with Gartner at all. And I'm guessing that you guys don't either. So how do we refute that? Why, starting with you, Pete, why is it that that's nonsense, that the trough of dissolution? We're not even getting anywhere near the peak of inflated expectation yet. We're just starting, aren't we? I think that's right. I think we're, we're not at the... Um uh, we're certainly nowhere near the trough of disillusionment yet. But I think what is, is true is, is, is what we really do need is to um, move from, from hype to reality. Um, I think this is a, uh, hopefully something we will see a lot more of. We'll see vendors taking um, much more notice of what their, their customers really need. We'll see people um, considering, uh, you know, not lumping everything together in one giant cloud fog, but starting to clear some of that. Uh, starting to work out what is really important um, for your particular slant on the application of the cloud and making sure that your organization gets the pieces uh, it needs uh, and, and really you know, get some of that um, vendor FUD out of the way. So customers moving center stage, that's your uh, Absolutely your for us. That's, the, that's, 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 that's it. what it's going to be that's about. That's what it's next. about. Martin, do you agree with that? I think there's a difference in vendors and customers. Vendors might be in a bubble. Customers are not. They're being rational, they're moving into cloud. And I'm a big believer in Bill Gibson's statement when he said, the future is here, it's just not widely distributed yeah. yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we already see the uses that we'll see over the next three years. It's just that there are small pockets here and there uh, in the academic world, in the government sector, some high-tech companies. And that's what we will see spreading all over the whole enterprise market. So you again, you see it as playing out. I mean, it's, re it's really just beginning. I'm sort of hoping that even if there's a bubble, you know, it, it won't harm everybody and that we and I would be in a place where we're not harmed. <laughs> oh, that's, that's understandable, Lawrence. <clears throat> I don't think there's a bubble at all. Um, I, I think everything's legit and really growing at the speeds that you're seeing. And, and I think uh, there is a major transformation going on and, and we're all living it and adapting it at our own pace. And I, I don't believe there's any hype in it, but I do, I think uh, there's some distrust that's going to come from big failures. Um, we're crossing the chasm from the early adopters, and the early adopters who defined the cloud for us, uh, let us know that it's secure and safe. Well, now they're doing more radical things, moving multi-tiered big images into the cloud, uh, moving critical production things in the cloud that uh, traditionally have been in the enterprise. And I think there's going to be big problems that are going to come out of that. And, uh, and it's simply going to be just human mistakes. 
uh, but those mistakes will hit uh, the headlines and that will be a big issue. The other thing is the, the mainstreamers are going to come in and, uh, and just try and rush into it with a lot of money and a big budget. And, uh, and I think probably on the public side of the cloud versus private side, you're going to see um, some failures. SLAs that are, we saw SLAs missed. We realized that Amazon is really made up of people and technology. Uh, and that wasn't, you know, they were unbeatable and unfailable uh, a year ago. And, uh, and I think we're going to see bigger uh, uh, failings, uh, not necessarily from Amazon, but from somewhere in the public uh, yeah. um, space. Do, does the notion of fail fast, can that apply to an industry in the same way it can apply to a company? I mean, should we get that over with so we can push through it? It's like a plane I'm not, I'm not wishing this upon I, I think it's like a plane crash. Um, nobody wants it to happen, and it's not that type of failure. So, so I don't. I think fail fast applies to. Uh, I was speaking to someone today about uh, they wanted to adapt cloud, a consultant, and and trying to convince a, you know, late main, mainstream or early main, mainstreamer, and how to do it. And you know, what I had told them is expect their uh, private cloud to uh, be a short-term investment and experiment. That in three years, absolutely 100% of the technology that they have. Uh, will be completely replaced, but the cross uh, IT processes that they set in place uh, should stay there, and that's what they're really investing in to figure out how does IT work differently in a cloud-based environment, but expect the technology to change underneath it. So I'd say fell fast in that regard. Where are you in this, Dara? Yeah, I think we're, I, I totally agree with the guys here, right? Um, I think we're going to see some splashes on the public side, like in the public cloud environments, but I think like the dedicated private is really the environment, the sandbox that the enterprises can play in. Um, I, I do disagree with Garner completely on that. You know, from what I'm seeing in my industry, I'm the place where they live, right? I'm seeing them be built now. So it's not like I'm seeing big Google deployments, right, because it's already done, or big Amazon deployments. I'm seeing the enterprises deploy this stuff today. Um, but it's more in a private environment. You know, they prayed with the public for the test dev, and some people betted on it, and they see a bit of a splash when something goes down. Um, but in reality, I definitely don't see an issue or in the near term of anything, um, a downturn in the technology. I'll see the cloud providers, you're seeing the software providers today adapt to how do I package my software with the hardware and turn it into what it's supposed to be? Commoditized hardware with shrink wrap software that can be used in a public or private environment based on what I want to use it for or what I want to sell it for. I think that underlying hardware may change out, but the IT processes, that's where our challenges are. Getting the IT guys to realize that this stuff really is as simple as we're telling them it is, and it can really automate their processes. So I think it's the human aspect that will cause us problems. No, I don't think it's the technology at all, and not in the slightest. All right, slightly different tack. Martin, start with you. Do you see yourself as a cloud CEO? Does it matter to you? It happens to be cloud? Oh, it absolutely matters. You're a cloud CEO. You're proud of that. I am. I'm completely in the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm not cloud. Is, is that how you would introduce yourself to someone who's got no clue, really? Where you, perhaps they've never met you. So somebody who has no clue, I tell them that Amazon Web Services is like Pete's Coffee. Fantastic coffee, you find it all over the world, you can buy as much as you like, it has unlimited scalability. But the real connoisseurs, they need espresso machines. <laughs> and we just make the best espresso machines on the planet. That's how I describe it. And I don't use the word cloud, I use the word coffee. Well, there you are. So there's, there's my other. Same to you, Peter. You're a cloud CEO? Um, yes, I'm a cloud CEO, but um, I'm also a virtualization 2.0 CEO because uh, our focus is on enterprise customers, and uh, you can view what we do, um, you know, you can, you can label it cloud and put it in the cloud, but we, we also advance existing virtualized environments, and we have a, a lot of customers whose, whose internal private clouds are effectively uh, advancing them to the next stage of virtualization, getting past all of the issues they've got. So, yeah, I like the cloud label. And, yeah, I, was gonna and say, I thought you were all going to say, no, I'm IT value CEO, Jeremy. Yeah, but well, actually, yeah, it turns I'm out it's certainly cloud value, thing. delivering value to customers. But if you want to you know, put labels on it, then um, I think we can get too hung up in, in the, the cloud. Um, you know, everybody cloud washes everything. Um, clearly, my company is, is dead center in cloud, um, uh, as is Martin's. But um, must remember that cloud isn't absolutely everything. And it's actually not about what we are, it is about what our customers are. Absolutely. And, and yeah. they use different terminologies. Some come from the 
virtualization space and they go to cloud. Some come from the public cloud and they need a private cloud. Some just go straight in. Some see it as a, a part of DevOps. There are many different ways of approaching it. That's how we know it's a massive shift in the industry because there isn't just one way of doing it right. or just one use case. There are many. Well, so you should ask customers, are you a cloud customer? Well, we'll, we'll do that next. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence, where would you be on that? Does it help uh, you? Is it opening doors to be a cloud CEO? You know, um, I've never thought about it that way. Um, I, I, I believe we're a cloud enablement company, so um, uh, whether you're going to a public cloud or a private cloud, you have to have the tools to be able to use your existing applications and your existing server images and, and migrate them into the cloud. And uh, so I kind of think about the, the gold rush and uh, we're the company that's selling the tools to get the gold. Uh, and, uh, and, and because we can enable all the miners and all the uh, different mines uh, to go uh, tap uh, the, the full capability of cloud. Well, Daryl's hedge his bets. He's not only director of cloud, but director of SaaS, director of media. So I'm thinking that, that it wasn't enough for you well, just I, well, to no, be actually, the cloud exec. No, in re reality, well, it's actually because you know, the cloud technologies can be applied to so many different markets, right? I think we get very hung up in cloud as a product rather than cloud as technology and orchestration technology that basically, depending on what you do, you're going to do order to billing within a single platform, right? Um, so the way I see it, I don't necessarily get hung up on the cloud component. It really is a case of, I'm a solutions guy, right? We're right. a solutions company. We're a matchmaker. We bring together people like Ray Simi. We work with people like Abaco or Eucalyptus or you know the Hexagrid guys. It doesn't matter. We work with these guys to try and put them with the right, the customers with the right people to deploy a solution that meets the customer's need. Because really, it's, it is IT. It's like I'm taking IT and I'm taking things that were a headache and I'm turning it into an automated solution and I want them to build it with me and I want them to connect it through my facilities. And the only way to do that is to work with the right people. So I guess I'm a matchmaker versus a cloud guy. All right, well that's good. Uh, just for a second, take off those executive hats then. Just be a US citizen for a moment and answer me the following. In view of, you know, think of Vivek Kundra, think of cloud first. In, in view of the federal sector's move, towards the cloud. Did you yourselves foresee that? Or is that the law of unintended consequences? Doom and gloom everywhere, terrible economy, and suddenly you've got this incredible use case coming up. And again, just building, just coming up. How important is federal sector to making this whole thing work? So I think going back to what you said about crossing the chasm, right. that there's a difference today in crossing the chasm because we have open source software that crosses chasms every day. So if, you have, if you're an open source vendor, you don't necessarily need to know everything several years in advance because the software just goes out there. Right. And that's what we've seen with the federal sector. It did take us by positive surprise when we saw how it grew on its own. And now we're actively uh, servicing them and making sure we have the features they need. But they actually took the initiative. Yeah, they us. really did. They did it, yeah, absolutely. It's nice. <laughs> Talk about being in the right place at the right time. Pete, does that affect your business? Um, it has. Um, we're probably not in the federal space as much as we're in the traditional well, I enterprise meaning, space. I was meaning sort of indirectly. Yeah. So not even directly, but indirectly. Just the fact Absolutely. That I mean, you know, you know it's, I think it's made uh, other people sit up and say, hey, right. if the government's doing it, God, we, you know, we need to step up here. Right, you would have thought. Yeah. We, you know, we're seeing it's, it's difficult to uh, to um, attribute the, the the rise in in cloud adoption just saying it you know directly to do with the federal government's moves. Um, I don't think that's you know an influencer, but not not the not the cause for sure. I found a very odd statistic. I don't think this is secret or or even top secret. I should say, as you know, we had Jill Singer here, and she's still I don't know if she's in the audience, but uh, Jill was talking about I don't I don't that this can't be con confidential. So imagine that the DOD budget is being cut. And imagine that we're not talking $650 million like we might be talking about. We're talking $650 billion between now and 2017. Interesting sort of problem set. How do you drive out $650 billion of spending? But, you know, cloud, it turns out, is one of the answers. So oddly, they're going to shave the IT budget, but that again will push the cloud side of things. So you get this very odd, my head is spinning. You've got all this terrible gloom everywhere and you keep winning. I mean, you, you know, cloud computing keeps winning. Is that process just inevitable now? 
I mean, you, you are yes. doing the right thing at the yeah. right time. Absolutely. Right. right. So, I mean, you do look like kind of happy about that. It's a horrible thing, but that's what's happening, right? What's horrible with it? Well, it's the, horrible the, that the, the whole the world is melting The alternative down is horrible. Mm. It's the alternative which is horrible, which is that they couldn't stop the spending increase okay, because they are running on old hardware, I old legacy corrected. vendors who overcharge for buggy closed software. Yeah, yeah. no, I stand corrected. That I, is I true. Think, you know, I, 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 it's very personal. It's <laughs> my heart good. when I see it. It's like, uh, when you think about it, it's like, you know, you can hear all the stats. It doesn't matter who we're talking to. Right? Oh, the average IT department needs one person between, you know, for every, like, 10 to 12 physical boxes, right? You know, you go cloud computing, you look at some of the large deployments, they've got, like, one or two people managing, like, 100 or 1,000 physical boxes, right? You look at your resource utilization. I can buy myself a dozen, I don't know, um, Dells, right? And in a traditional IT environment, I've got a guy looking after a dozen Dell computers. The hardware is, I think the story is, it's good for the government, it's good for the citizens of the country, and which I'm one, yay. Um, but you know, it's good for that environment, but in reality, it's a case of let's just stop buying boxes, start thinking about the application, what it's gonna be used for, and put a piece of software on top of that that makes it really usable and automated, and turn this computing into a utility that makes us all a bit more productive, I think, as a country, or make us more productive overall, and definitely, well, you know, the government's adopting the technology, then the rest of the enterprise that sat around there twiddling your thumbs, maybe somebody needs to look at the IT department. I hate to say it, but it's true. All right, well, look, we're trying to look, look forward, and looking forward to the future is always difficult. So many different ways we could come at this. So how about that we project ourselves into waking up one morning in the middle of 2012, let's say, which seems awfully close, but still quite a far away in cloud time. And what is the headline? that we're gonna be reading. I'll, I'll, I'll go first on this one. I'm sort of not a doom gloom scenario, but I got a, a horrible feeling that I'm gonna open up about the middle of 2012, the newspaper, and it's gonna say, cloudwashing.com sells for $65 million. Somebody realizes there's more money in actually pushing the cloud washing that's annoying you all than in trying to sort it out. So that would be the sort of the downside. But think of a positive headline that you're gonna see, because you disagree with Gartner, so it's going to be something good. We'll start with you, Daryl. There's going to be a headline. What is the headline going to say that's going to cheer you up in 2012? It's not going to be, you know, IT global spending downturn ends, because no. that's not going to happen. I, I, you know, generally speaking, I think it's going to be a case of the headline's going to be something along the lines of buy your dedicated cloud computing solution today and have it running tomorrow. Oh, it's I like going to be, that. That's quite it, it good. literally is that case. You know, and, and nobody will say the, that's bullshit. They'll no, say, the, no, no, that the, could the, be so, the, the, You know, the way these are built, like the eucalyptus software, right? Or, you know, or the packages, or with the Racemi, how to get you to that environment, right? The way this all works is about taking commodity hardware, automating all the positioning and processes. And I want to see headlines of people say, oh, whatever, I get it. Right. Right. So your headline might be a use case, somebody who it's did exactly a that, use case. and, and they're reporting on it. That I, I, I could buy it today, I can turn it off tomorrow, and I have two guys and a, a can of beer, and everything just works. Because then I can actually go and sell stuff versus spending my time looking at flashing lights and sexy boxes. Lawrence, give us a headline. Still thinking about your two guys and a can of beer. It reminds <laughs> me of some good times. Um, so, um, yeah, the headline would read, uh, the federal government uh, migrates to the cloud, and, and Ray Simi moved them there. Um, <laughs> I, I, think it, I mean, I was just in D.C., and it's so inefficient. I, one of the beautiful, most beautiful cities, and you walk, and you just, I mean, not only do they need to redo, you know, the, the, the different uh, IT infrastructures and move to the cloud, uh, but quite frankly, there's just buildings that need to change names and because it's so paper-driven. Uh, but um, I do see that as a positive note. The newspapers are so negative, but... You know, I do see uh, us being a big part of the whole migration play, and, uh, and not just here uh, domestically, but internationally as well. Martin? Is the headline going to be in Europe or in the States? Are you asking about, about good headlines or bad well, headlines? I'm, I'm just curious. <laughs> it's going to be in Asia. If you talk about <laughs> cloud and you say geographically, we will see some amazing news from China. Uh, that was what yes. I was thinking. Are we uh, even yeah. going to be able to read the actual headline that matters? Yeah. yeah. But business-wise, I think we will see really smart people realizing that the old software companies are stagnating and not growing mm -hmm. anymore. 
they're not going away, but they're not growing. And the growth is in new companies, n the names of which we have just barely learned how to spell. Yeah. 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 I think I agree with that. So who knows what's going to be in that headline. Pete, are you going to be so, reading so, this paper? So my, my headline is, is really simple. It's cloud computing delivers on its promises. That's the headline I want to Ooh, see. Ooh, that's the headline. I got to wonder what the text is going to say. Yeah. Cloud computing well, delivering on its promises. Delivering on its promises means delivering value, really delivering the cost savings it promised. That's the key. But I mean, let's drill down into that, because to be honest, what are the promises? You know, the promises have been so multitudinous. So why don't we leave the audience with that thought? What, what do you feel are the legitimate promises of cloud computing on which it will deliver? Because I mean, we're not interested in the cloud washing part. What is it going to deliver in 2012, Pete? Well, what it needs to deliver is it needs to deliver tangible cost savings. It needs to be able to actually state, I saved this money because of that. And, and you know, I got my utilization rate up to X. I, I got the number of redundant um, uh, servers out there down to this level. Because there's a huge amount of redundancy out there from people, um, you know, provisioning, having provisioned stuff that's been left around for, for years that the cloud can solve that problem. Um, so, so tangible results and also intangible. You know, the, I, I, we need to bring the agility back that, that IT organizations have killed. That, you know, it's just it's ludicrous that you should be in an enterprise company and it should take you months to get even a virtual server provision and it still happens every day. So you want to see, instead of talking about increased agility, you want the exact use case, this was increased agility, I documented. Want, I want cloud computing to deliver for our customers so that all of the stakeholders are having their needs taken into account, not just one or two, but all of the stakeholders, because as I talked about in my keynote this morning, it is possible to balance all those together, mm -hmm. and then you can get something that's greater than the sum of the parts and, and get that real cost saving. Uh, I, that's what I want delivered. I want the, the service for the, the consumers of the cloud. You know, and we're, we're seeing that we're, you know, uh, in, on the, the consumer side, I mean, the, the, the public consumer side, we're seeing those sorts of things start to deliver. We need to be delivering those sorts of services for enterprise customers. And on a scale of one to 10, what are the chances that's going to happen in 2012? Um, I, think it's a, I think there's a good chance that it will start to happen. I think that there are still some failures uh, to happen on the way uh, because um, a, a lot of people still think, a lot of IT organizations still think that cloud means something different to what it actually means. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can deliver something that you call a, a private cloud, but it doesn't deliver on what the consumers of that cloud need. Um, there's still that stuff going. I mean, you know, the, the financial services industry started to do, try and do this uh, several years ago, delivering things that, that you know, we had a, a comment on it, um, you know, again, that I, that I showed this morning. Um, you know, our, our, our company delivered, you know, our IT organization delivered us a cloud. It was so hard to use. There was so much, um, you know, uh, um, workflow and, and, and permissioning and everything else. It was useless. So uh, there are failures to happen by people not listening to how you need to do it right. Um, and, and it's about considering the needs of all those stakeholders. Darrell's nodding vigorously. The promise is that we should expect confidently cloud computing to deliver on, Daryl? I think we're going to look at two different factors, right? I, I agree with seeing some big splashes, maybe some of the legacy vendors trying to push the technologies which are probably a little bit too bloated. Um, from a promises perspective, I do think it's the newer providers that are going to start delivering you know, solutions that do show those tangible results. Where I can have an IT department, I know I've got something somewhere that's running and working, colo on premise in a public cloud, and it just works and I can get on and do my business. So I think the promise of the cloud is I get tangible savings because I've gone from having two dozen boxes stuffed in a closet somewhere down to one or two or three, right? And I've got one or two IT guys versus a couple of dozen IT guys running around. I think the promise is literally looking at, I have a responsive business that delivers on my business needs, and my IT just works. I think the IT just has to work, and that's what cloud delivers, is the ability for IT to just work. Scale of 1 to 10, what's the possibility of that happening in 2012? I think middle of 2012, we should start seeing some tangible results. Um, yeah, the, my concern is the the, le the legacy companies that have the pennies to throw around will may slow that process. Um, it's it's come almost like the Apple Microsoft scenario, right? Okay. We've got an Apple Microsoft thing going on right now. 
and uh, I think uh, you know with the cloud technologies that's my concern but definitely a scale one to ten uh, I'd say we're gonna start seeing those tangible results middle of next year say an eight nine easily easily um, yeah I'm kind of hoping the government turns around but you know as we sat we sat here this morning we heard NRO presenting about it right if they're using it as a technology Absolutely. we just got to get over the fact that cloud is a technology it's not just a product it's not something I just buy it's a technology it's a process it's it's IT automation at its best. Right. Lawrence? Yeah, I, uh, I think it's going on now. I, I, I don't, I predictions. Yeah, I'm, su I'm surprised it's you're all saying as if there aren't any uh, really yeah. good I mean, use cases. I, I, I think it's a love story that's on the headlines. It's, um, it's a love story. Uh, uh, um, uh, the business loves IT and the IT loves the business. Uh, you know, I spent oh, half my career in IT. Remarried, you mean? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't think they were ever married. Uh, they were put together as roommates. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, IT is a hard job. I mean, it's, it's um, it, uh, look at the audience here. I mean, I, at least half of the folks here, are IT side, maybe on the business mm -hmm. side, as well. But um, you know, it's it's very hard to please business because business wants it now. They oversell what IT uh, can do, and, and and then a contract signed, and uh, and cloud can deliver things a lot faster. And and I think there's people probably in this room, certainly at this show, certainly at last year's show, that have done this. They've got IT uh, the business singing uh, praises. And I, I think we're just going to hear more and more of that. And then, you know, the mainstreamers are going to say, well, who, who did that? Who did you do it? What tools did you use? What technologies uh, uh, brought it together? And it's an ecosystem. I, I don't think there's one single solution out there that meets everything. I, certainly now VMware is trying to sell that, you know, all things VMware. But, boy, you pay a crazy price tag and get locked into that. Uh, but uh, there's an ecosystem of very good technology out there. Mm -hmm. You know, the four of us could come together and some others and, and put together a fantastic solution mm -hmm. that the business is absolutely singing the praises for IT and wanting to promote their friends in IT, not bash them and point fingers and say there's downtime and who's going to get fired for it. And, uh, and so I, I think it's going on now. And we're going to hear, hear a lot more of it. And, and I can't wait to hear it because uh, the IT guys deserve it uh, very much. All right, well, look, talking of can't wait, I always make this promise for the very last power panel of the day that we're going to make it the shortest power panel so that people can get on and get to the bar. But we also want to leave them with something to think about. So I'm afraid it's down to you guys to manage that. But I'm going to make it really easy because we're only going to think about one word. When I kicked off this conference, I was reminding people that, I mean, the consensus seems to be that when we started Cloud Expo, I mean, I'll be honest, you know, mea culpa, cloud computing was, was you know, just a noun. It was an interesting noun, two-word noun, and we talked about what it was the whole time. And then, luckily, by about well, maybe fourth Cloud Expo, it really did take on this more verbal nature. People really were beginning to do it. And I think we still, I, I'm speaking for you, but I hope we agree, we're, we're actively in that phase. It really is a verb now. Cloud computing is something you do and do it in so many different ways, myriad ways. But it just occurred to me that nobody's, uh, it's great that it's gone from noun to verb, but we want to send these people away with something they can remember. So we're going to send them away with an adjective. Terribly simple. Nouns, verbs, adjectives. Let's fill them in. So you just got to answer, or not answer, complete the following sentence. And I'm going to pick the order very randomly, but the sentence is terribly simple. In 2012, Cloud computing will be predominantly, now I mean I might say purple, say, I mean that would be my answer, I don't know why, but it could be a marketing slogan. So I don't know who we should start with, but I think we're going to start with Daryl. <laughs> Daryl, in 2012 my friend, think of all these good people that are going to yeah. the bar, cloud computing will be predominantly deployed. Deployed, very nice, very positive, very upbeat. Next, we're going to go for Pete. Peter, in 2012, cloud computing will be predominantly... I hope it'll be predominantly predictable. Predominantly predictable, that's very good. Predominantly predictable, because it isn't at the moment. It needs to be, I mean, what it offers is, is so predictability. So from a business side, right. From what it offers is predictability to all of those stakeholders. They I know like what they're going to get. They know how they can get it, when they business can get it. Business will like that. Takes out doubt. That's a very good word, predictable. Mm -hmm. Lawrence, in 2012, cloud computing, sir, 
will be predominantly started. I, I, I think there's so many people that just haven't even began. And, uh, oh, that's what I know, think about this Ghana thing. Right, they're out of line. Go <laughs> as fast as you can. Uh, and uh, if it's too risky, if your organization's too bureaucratic, you know, pick something small. I mean, call it something else. And mm -hmm. uh, it's really just data center automation. And, uh, and figure out what IT processes you need to automate. Strip something out, you know, don't do chargeback. You know, if you can get away with, you know, just make it smaller, smaller until you feel like you can handle it and just do it. So uh, what's frustrating is running into people uh, year over year, months over months that, you know, we're just still analyzing it and figuring it out. And, you know, the federal, the only reason federal's doing it, they were mandated to do it. They didn't get bonuses unless they moved and they got fired if they didn't. So, I mean, at some point, if you're in the, in the public sector or the private sector, you've got to pick a reason, just get started. Uh, so that's what I'm hoping to That's uh, very strong. So we've got predominantly deploy, mm -hmm. predominantly predictable, which is difficult to say at the bar particularly, predominantly started. Martin, that allows you to be, literally have the final world. In 2012, Martin Mikos, cloud computing will be predominantly? There's something magical with E. So I'll say elastic. Predominantly elastic, which it should be. Right? But suggest that it isn't at the moment sufficiently or what? No, I didn't suggest that you didn't okay. ask that. No, I didn't one, ask it will that. be next year. I think it will be, be very predominantly elastic. elastic. There you are. Four words to contemplate as you make your way to the bar. But before that, let's please, in the time on the way, thank Pete Malcolm, CEO of Abiquo, Martin Mikos. We're not thanking in the time honored way yet. <laughs> Martin Mikos, CEO of Eucalyptus of Symptoms. Florence Guillory, CEO of Racimi. And last but most definitely not least, Daryl, who is just Telex's head of everything. That's what no, I should say. Right Director now. of everything that matters. Um, much more importantly, thank you, audience. A long day, I know. I'm sorry that we do these 12 hour days, but. I think we might be doing only 10 hours tomorrow. I'll, I'll go and check. Thank you, gentlemen. Off you go. Thank Drinks you. are on me. Thank you.